what, what I was going to ask you about oh, yeah. is, um, I've, I've also seen you in, I'm a big fan of Carry On movies, I'm sure you were in, I think, Cleo and Cowboy and... I'm afraid so, yes. <laughs> yes. What, do you have any good memories or bad memories of those films? Uh, uh, to get through them as quickly as possible. Ah. Yeah. No, they were fun, I, that would be wrong to say that, they were great fun, but I never wanted to be in them seriously, I only did it as a joke, because I knew the producer very well. And he said, just can you do, do a quick cameo? So the other day, they rang me up, and my agent rang me up. It's a rather sad story, actually. He said, I've got great news for you. I've just fixed you in a marvelous movie. And I said, what? He said, uh, uh, this is Columbus. And I thought, my God, it was, this is Gerard Papier, who's the hottest film star in the world. Now, after Manon de Sors, you know, the, his two or three wonderful films. And, Surrounded the better, and I thought that's marvelous. So how big a role? He said, "Oh, it's just a cameo, but it's lovely." And I'm sending you the script, and I'll get it tomorrow morning. So the next morning, I was awake at half past five, you know, waiting for the men to come. And there was a thump as it came through the door, and I opened it up, and there it was, "Carry On, Columbus." And this was the Carry On movie, which is not the same thing <laughs> at all. And I was absolutely heartbroken, but I read it, and it was quite funny. And I, I rang the, the director. And producer and said, but I really didn't, wasn't frankly keen on doing this, not after all these years. And they said, well, for God's sake, do, because everybody else is dead. You're practically <laughs> the only one that's alive if you think of the cast and the company. I mean, the, the large majority of them were dead. He said, we've got to have some of the old originals, so would you do it? So I, yes, I did. And, uh, and on the, I went on the first day to the makeup room, and there was one of our greatest actresses very, very hot at the moment, enormously successful, uh, called Maureen Lipman. And Maureen Lipman was there having makeup put on, and I said, hello, love, what are you doing here? She said, the same as you, darling, trying to make a buck. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it, that she was going to be in a carry on Columbus. And I said, well, I'm very surprised that you do this. And she said, well, the condition of the British film business, naturally I do it. And we went onto the floor, and there was an archbishop standing there mumbling away with, with his lines. And I said to Maureen, I recognize that fellow, don't you? So she said, yes, and it was T.P. McKenna. Well, you probably wouldn't know who T.P. McKenna is, but he's one of our top dramatic actors. And there he was playing two lines in Carry On Columbus. So I thought, well, that sets it well for the rest of the film. Everybody that speaks a line is going to be a name, and so it, <laughs> it should be, you know, something good to work with. As it transpired and turned out, it was terrible. It was diabolical, because... You can't get people to do what other people do and originate. You can't get a man to be at the part that Kenneth Williams originates, or with Charlie Hawtrey or any of that team. They think people can't do it. And they tried that with Doctor Who without real success, and it wasn't fair on the actor. That was the master, because Roger Delgado was brilliant, and you couldn't you couldn't better him. So when they gave the part to um, uh, Anthony, 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 Anthony Ainley. Uh, it was a miserable thing to give somebody to do because he had to copy Roger Delgado, which of course he, he, nobody could do. He, he wanted to be himself, so it would have been much better if he'd been able to originate his own interpretation of the role. So I didn't really enjoy it as much as I should do. I enjoyed getting the money, that was good. <laughs>